it's fitting that I present this tribute to Andy uh, using Zoom technology because we used to both commiserate that we spent far more time on telecons as astronomers and on telescopes. And I, I really just wanted to express my deep love, admiration, and uh, affection for Andy. And I still haven't gotten over this loss and I never will. I think about him every day and uh, that's not likely to change. I spent a lot of time here in my office talking about ideas and hopes and dreams. And uh, it's really just devastating that he's not here. He's not here to continue this uh, lovely relationship that we had and he really came to me as a gift. I met Andy through his mother at, of all places, a mikvah, which is a Jewish ritual bath uh, that was attempting to be being uh, constructed in San Diego about eight or nine years ago. And I didn't meet Andy, I met his mother. You know, so he wasn't even present when I first learned how incomparably brilliant he was. I learned that from his mother, Andy. Uh, and naturally, I was uh, kind of a little bit suspicious of the praise coming out of uh, such an uh, obviously unbiased observer, his mother, uh, who is also very lovely and gracious and uh, effusive. And, and I could tell instantly that if he was anything like her, uh, that it would be a coup if I could actually get Andy to come to San Diego on a permanent basis. So we started to scheme about it. Andy was my friend, and the universe was his laboratory. And that's why I choose to give this tribute out here in the darkness with the sky up behind me, because he literally used the entire universe as his place to do tests. I remember my first visit with Andy uh, at the MIT co-op, uh, and he was trying to explain the nuances of quantum mechanics to me. Uh, which as a uh, physician, I was still having a little bit of trouble getting. Uh, and he valiantly tried to explain those things to me over the years, um, but really engaged me on his view of physics, which I come to see as calm acceptance of the unknowable. I feel so lucky to have called Andy Friedman a friend and a colleague at the Clark Center. and. I still, you know, can't believe um, that we don't have him with us and that we don't have many more years of talking about future projects and, and coming up with ideas for new programs and, and just having the kind of warm, funny, delightful conversations he was known for, um, you know, after a, a Clark Center event or, or over some Rubios on campus. Um, so I just want to, you know, again, send my, my deepest condolences to Kristen and to Andy's parents and to everyone in his family and all of us uh, in uh, academia and the world of science um, that uh, mourn his loss and, and miss his, his warm heartedness, his expansive imagination, his, um, willingness to collaborate and entertain uh, wild ideas and uh, and you know especially for us you know, with, with Clark as our namesake um, just how much joy and inspiration he took from science fiction um, but uh, from all of the arts and, and in music um, especially and I actually wanted to include some of the skills and talents that Andy Andy uniquely possessed in my group's research and I knew I needed somebody with his exceptional capabilities as an observer uh, using optical telescopes to make the next move into studying the foundational aspects of whether or not the universe has certain properties that everyone assumes it does have, namely that it's symmetric, that it has certain, certain relationships between the speed of light and the time of, of travel over which light journeys to our telescopes. So his mother made the match and we start to talk the next time he was in San Diego. And we were just instantly became bonded. We became friends instantly. 
And eventually we found a plan for him to come to San Diego, not only as a scientist, as a postdoc or something like that, but actually as a research scientist, which meant that he could mentor students and kind of act as a professor without all the annoying grading and so forth that we have to deal with as, as faculty members. So it really suited him well because he's a, he was a natural teacher. See, I can't even talk about him without slipping into the present tense. He's forever so vivacious and vibrant in my mind. Uh, we also began a partnership which would last for many years and that was something we ended up calling in a version of the three tenors. We called it the three Jews. It was me, David Brin, and Andy, and we presented uh, sold out, but I point out there were free science talks at the Arthur C. Clarke Center for Human Imagination. There, there are some ideas, very speculative, in these versions of string theory where you have these large extra dimensions, like these brain world scenarios that David was mentioning. Um, we, we have some evidence that's very you know, intriguing. This is the idea of so-called dark matter. Uh, it, it seems like there's a lot of missing mass in the universe. And some people speculate that one way of d explaining this is that it could be due to the gravitational influence of other brains uh, farther away. I don't know if this is correct, but that's the kind of a thing where maybe there actually already is evidence out there for other universes, and we just need the theoretical and philosophical framework in order to really elucidate that. Um, one always feels that there's going to be more time, and I always felt that there would be more time to do more things with Andy, to have more conversations, and have more of the wonderful three physicists gatherings that we've done on occasion for the public. Um, so this is a terrible blow. Yeah. The biggest concepts in physics, the arrow of time, the nature of the multiverse, free will, et cetera. And eventually he uh, ended up, you know, really wonderfully leading a talk about his project, the Cosmic Bell Test, that was later turned into a PBS special, a Nova, about this search for, you know, certain properties of, of quantum mechanics that, Einstein himself referred to it, referred to as spooky action at a distance and it involved things like entanglement and the sort of fitting because we all are still deeply entangled with Andy. I feel so lucky to have called Andy Friedman a friend and a colleague at the Clark Center. And I still, you know, can't believe um, that we don't have him with us and that we don't have many more years of talking about future projects and, and coming up with ideas for new programs and and just having the kind of warm, funny, delightful conversations he was known for. Um, One of the highlights of my you know, time with Andy was when the two of us presented along with Professor Shelley Wright of UCSD. We presented at Comic-Con and, you know, I really saw Andy in his glory at that time. He was just beaming. He was in front of his beloved wife, Kristen, his parents, and uh, I, I think, um, you know, his friends from San Diego. And it was just a delight to have him uh, shining and, and sparkling so luminously. One of the highest things that I ever can say that I was able to do is to make him laugh. Uh, he was, he had this incredibly droll sense of humor and he would say things under his breath and, and you would just have to stifle a laugh in the middle of a talk or uh, just, just his running commentary. He was really uh, delightfully mercurial and uh, just such a, such a dream of a friend, of a scientist, such a deep scientist, only cared about doing the most, um, challenging tasks in all of science, the foundation of reality, of quantum mechanics, of relativity, of astrophysics. Um, and he did it all with a gusto and a passion that was irrepressible. Andy was a scientist, uh, an astrophysicist, and a vigorously imaginative one. He helped to advance our knowledge of the extent of the universe with his work on supernovas, but also deep quantum aspects that combine the uh, application of quasars at opposite ends of the universe to study whether or not the universe is deeply entangled. It's not everybody who gets to connect the very large with the very small. And he did, uh, did things a lot better than I could do in many ways, especially with his patience with undergraduates and, and his keen sense of, of uh, to detail, attention to detail that he always exhibited. So 
it's with uh, a great a great sadness that I have to recount this because it's it's almost impossible to conceive of him not being here. And so I can always uh, can always count on on my uh, on my re- relationship with him, my faith that someday uh, we will be all together reunited in a better place. Uh, but for now, the earth is a lot poorer. Uh, and heaven is a lot richer because he's there. So I miss him tremendously. And I, uh, I want to express my deep love and admiration for him and for his family. And, um, and just tell him that anytime I look up at the cosmos, I think about him. He's really, truly a giant, humble, yet hilarious uh, astronomer that, uh, that, that I had such a privilege to work with. And the only regret I had is that it was too short. But the thing I'll never forget about him is, is how he made me laugh and how he made me think. And I'll never forget that. Here in the sky, we've had the comet Neowise this summer. And as it's just appeared back out into the darkness, I think that that's Andy taking his flight for us uh, back out to the universe carrying his spirit. I thought that Neowise was a brilliant name for a satellite that discovered a comet. And Neowise is the, the uh, way that I think of Andy. Neo because he was so new and so young and yet so wise. So with that, I'll say uh, adieu to Andy and uh, my best wishes to all uh, his family and my condolences. A deep mind, a loving husband, a good friend, and um, it would have been nice to have a whole lot more. A whole lot more Andy Friedman. Go thou forth and be be curious. Be critical. Criticize. But be curious and help make the civilization that he wanted. I feel so lucky to have called... Andy Friedman, a friend and a colleague at the Clark Center. And I still, you know, can't believe um, that we don't have him with us and that we don't have many more years of talking about future projects and, and coming up with ideas for new programs and, and just having the kind of warm, funny, delightful conversations he was known for, um, you know, after a, a Clark Center event or, or over some Rubio's on campus. Um, so I just want to, you know, again, send my, my deepest condolences to Kristen and to Andy's parents and to everyone in his family and all of us uh, in uh, academia and the world of science um, that uh, mourn his loss and and miss his his warm heartedness, his expansive imagination, his um, willingness to collaborate and entertain uh, wild ideas, and uh, and you know especially for us you know, with, with Clark as our namesake, um, just how much joy and inspiration he took from science fiction, um, but from all of the arts and, and in music um, especially. And this is. Uh, a poem that I, I call Prediction uh, and I dedicate it to Andy. If, if choice were an illusion, you were always going to go, entangled as it were, as you were with the stars. But still this spooky action, living on like ghosts in our expectant selves, of experiments to be designed, questions to be explored, revisions to be made to our version of the cosmic story but also lunches and tacos, traded jokes and books, and never enough time. It's there in the last conversation, your voice, a hushed energy, the idea of starting a family, the first step toward having one, gone. Stories are always being revised. I don't want yours to be rewritten. I like the earlier draft. I prefer to imagine it unspooling in a multiverse next door where you pass an old man with the kiss of a great grandchild on your cheek that even you could never have predicted. In this world, 
I settle for something unscientific. The thought of your soul, a dandelion scattered in a solar wind. Your journey not over. You only beginning to explore. You are the open loophole. You are the dark matter. You aren't gone. You are only the embodiment of non-locality, an emblem of the star's story on the nature of their hidden most heart and the open spaces between its words. You are the novum there, teasing the nature of possibility, the ink of the inkling of the story to come. And we are waiting and we are listening. Godspeed, Andy. <laughs>